What's about anatomy? Anatomy is uh, really important in the science of filler, and here we can observe the orbicularis oris muscle, the mental foramen with the mental nerve and the mental artery, the zygomatic measure muscle, the parotid gland, and the fascial artery that is the queen of the face, because we do not want any side effects and the fascial artery is very important to know to avoid ischemia and uh, necrosis. These are the layers of the chin. This is the bone, the deep fat, the mentalis muscle, the superficial fat and the skin. And inside the muscle, you find the fascial artery. And the eight layers of the mandibular angle are skin, fat, platysma, fat gain, parotid mesoteric fascia, parotid gland, masseter, and bone. Not very dangerous as the mental region. What about the two, uh, the differences between male and female? Uh, this is a beautiful actor and a beautiful actress with the square angle of the mandibula that's typically of the male and of the chin. And this is more soft angle of the mandibula in the female with the round chin, as you can see. In the bone, in the bone, in the man, the mandible is stronger with the clear cut angles and uh, the female mandible is light with subtle angles and chin is smaller and round while in the main is chin, uh, we find chin uh, larger and square. So let's talk a little bit about the proportionality of the female patient and the lower face. What is the bigonial width? This width should be less than the bisigomatic width. We do not want to increase the bigonial width. We will take into consideration either the intracantal width or the width of the base of the nose. That if we mark these, this line here from the base of the nose, we can see that this corresponds to Holly's width of her chin. We're going to take into consideration here the rickets plane. So if we go from the tip of the nose to the chin, my line here should be touching the chin, not the lower lip. What we would expect is this should be around four millimeters uh, anterior to the line and this around three millimeters. So what we want to achieve here is we want to bring Holly's chin forward. We have three areas which we can enhance in the female. First, we have the pagonium, which is the point of maximum anterior projection of the chin. Just turn up a little bit. Then we have the nathion here, which will give us also anterior projection, but it will help us elongate the chin. And down here in the inferior border of the mandible, we have the menton, which will just help us elongate the chin. So we're going to use this to our advantage and we're going to inject ultra deep 0.2 onto the pagonium and then we're going to inject ultra deep 0.2 again into the napkin. We have to contour this chin not just by doing these deep superperiosteal injections. We also have to bring the chin forward and we have to use our layer two here, which is a superficial fat in order to do so. So after doing my two boluses, I will use RHA4 with my cannula in order to bring the chin forward.
we can see that the, the width of the male chin here is broader, usually it would correspond roughly to the width of the um, oral commissures here. That um, rickets line, it's uh, where it should be. We expect a greater bigonial width. The male jawline here, the ideal one, would be approximately 130 degrees. Here we have um, seven layers. 